You know, it's great to see a new coordinator come in and be able to breathe life into a system that was ready to take off. Just like it's great to see a back like Brian Robinson Jr. get used in more of an all-purpose type of fashion where he's actually catching passes out of the backfield and becoming more of a part of the offense. And as this first play right here shows, he is definitely a major part of Eric Bieniemy's game plan probably pretty much heading into every single week this season. I've said it before and I'll say it again. A good screen game is an integral part of an Andy Reid or an Eric Bieniemy coached offense. It's always going to be a major part of what they do. It's good to see this offense having success doing what they're built to do. You know, talking more about Brian Robinson, he can do more than just carry the ball. He's actually a pretty good blocker, too, as this play right here shows. And if you see, Robinson kicks off to the side here and gets a nice chip block on the edge. Now, that chip block prevents player zero from doing anything around that edge. But, of course, there are several things going on inside of this play that make this play break down that had nothing to do with Robinson. While we're here, we might as well take a look at him. First things first, <laughs> Charles Leno... Junior, he barely even puts a hand on this man right here, and his man just blows around the end. Now, we'll say that Leno's game got better as the afternoon went on, but this right here was just a whiff. Thankfully, this is something that Sam has experienced with, and he knew to step up into the pocket. Of course, the problem is, is that Nick Gates couldn't hold on to his guy long enough for Sam to reset and look for somebody else open, and, and Gates' guy ended up making the sack right here. Excuse me, I do believe this was actually called incomplete. But all kinds of things going on in this play right here that lead up to him getting, you know, hit behind the line and then having to get rid of the ball. Now, show the play where he made a block on that edge. On this play right here, he completely misses his block. Now, Sam Howe is still able to make this throw even though he gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. Which, by the way, if this play is not tipped, this is a touchdown to John Bates right here. Because Bates had a step. 91 gets up there and tips it, and that would have been a touchdown. Now, it's a pulling Sam Cosme that makes the block that makes this possible. But at the same time, Robinson gets that push at the line of scrimmage right there. And it should be noted that Sadiq Charles and Charles Leno were able to, you know, push their guys in right there and create a nice little running lane. You watch a replay from this angle and you can see Sam Cosme just get enough of his guy right there to keep him away from B-Rob. I love as this play develops that Brian Robinson gets to the right of the line and then you'll see Charles Leno and him both direct back to the left. The line did a real good job of resetting itself right here and giving him another second level lane to run through right here to gain extra yards. You see Sadiq Charles has his man on skates right there as he pushes him across. Now this is the touchdown pass from Sam Howell to Terry McLaurin and I wanted to show this because you could see Brian Robinson go around the edge here and he makes to do a chip on Randy Gregory on the edge over there, but he doesn't actually get a chip off. But what he does is going around that edge, he makes it to where Gregory has to turn around and go the other way. And now I talked about that in the video I made about this play, but I wanted to double back and make sure that I made light of this block. Brian Robinson doing Brian Robinson things here. Now, he may not have had anything to do with the actual pass, but he made sure that his quarterback stayed clean. Of course, you had some Sam on Sam protection there with Cosme protecting Howe. As, you know, as Cosme protecting his guy, they kind of go back a little bit and Sam knows to step up and in and just toss. And of course, he throws a laser out there for a touchdown to Terry. That is an absolute beautiful pass, by the way. I have to say that again. There's all kinds of things going on down here in the trenches, but there's great protection going on as well. I mean, B-Rob gets this ball right here and he's able to run out and he's, I don't know what, seven, eight yards past the line of scrimmage before he ever gets touched. The Broncos just blew this play completely up. There's just no debate about it. This play right here, the Broncos just blew this thing up. At first glance, I thought maybe it was the protection issue or just whatever, but the Broncos were able to bring really good pressure off of that edge over there right at the same time as the whole left side of the line was pulling to the other side. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this ended up being an encroachment call on the defense, but I'm not 100% sure. There was a flag thrown at the end of this. If they would have had somebody to chip 42 right there, B-Rob could have had a decent gain around the right side, but there was absolutely nobody there to chip, nothing going on on that side. And I think 42 was able to read that they were going to pull just by instinct. But as soon as the play starts, you can see they all crashed down and they knew what was going to happen. 
Now, I'm pretty sure that Brian Robinson is the number one back in the league right now after contact, which is, you know, really bodes well for the Washington Commanders offense because this guy seeks out contact. That's a beautiful little spin move right there. I love to see my guy go in a complete rotation and continue to move down the field and pick up another, what, nine, 10 yards? Oh, yeah. And don't look now, but Curtis Samuel out front with a nice lead block. Yeah, I said it. Look at it. Nice lead block by Curtis Samuel. Watching it from the other direction, this is just a thing of beauty. I would love to see them, obviously they couldn't do it 20 times a game, but I would love to see them do this 20, 25 times a game, right? And, and just run it down the other team's throat. You know, now that Logan Thomas is out with, you know, the concussion protocol issues that he's going to have to go through now after that cheap shot from Kareem Jackson, John Bates is going to be in a position to get a lot of playing time. And for him, this is a major opportunity. See, in my opinion, he's been kind of like the guy on the cusp, you know. I feel like when they drafted him, they took him as like a number two tight end, a guy that's a, basically a blocking guy. He goes out there, you know, in, in running situations or whatever the case may be. A guy that they're not re really looking for a lot of receptions out of. But I feel like the position that's actually there for him for the taking is one that includes him in the offensive game plan. Because we already know that Eric Bieniemy loves having his tight ends involved in the offense. Now, while I feel like Cole Turner probably is the better offensive weapon, right now is the best chance for John Bates to show something. And this play right here was not what we needed to see. Watch him miss this block right here. This is absolutely horrible. He just does not get there in time. Part of this can be attested to 42 being a, a, you know quick on that edge over there, but 87 definitely did not get there to make his block. And he knows it too. You can see it in his body language after the play. He's like, oh, shit. The consummate pro works to get better in that situation and never let that happen again. If he's to be a tight end one in this game, he cannot allow that to happen to his running back back there in the backfield. But again, he's young, so he has to learn. But right here, this right here is an example of what you don't do. I absolutely love how they're using Chris Rodriguez as a fullback slash H-back in a lot of these sets. Now, in this particular play right here, him and Sadiq Charles actually pull to the other side of the field. And in the process, they turn into two lead blockers for Brian Robinson to get in there and get this touchdown. Now, Charles makes his block first and then Rodriguez second, but they both get their men and do their job. And Robinson's able to get in there for the score. It doesn't hurt the Gates is there to push him across at the end either, you know. Again, the screen game with this team is going to be on point all year long. I, I see that coming. This particular screen right here, honestly, should have been a touchdown. Do you see the way this all goes down right here? Look at that. Now roll it back, and you can see Sadiq Charles and Sam Cosme out in the open field, and they trip over each other's feet. If they don't trip over each other's feet, that is going to be a touchdown. They are blocking their men, and B-Rob is going in for a score right there. I'm telling you, that right there would have been six points had those two big men not gotten their feet caught up with each other. I bet you that they cursed each other on that. You can see them both lay on the field like, God, motherfucker. I mean, on the very next play, look how close they are to the line of scrimmage. You cannot tell me that wouldn't have been a touchdown on that screen right there. And then, of course, you know, I, I wasn't too upset for very long as the very next play, Brian Robinson's able to run it in for another touchdown here around the edge right here. And at this point right now, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was sitting over here with, with, with my chest stuck completely out. Watch the replay from this side, and you can see that the line does their job. They put the whole defensive line on skates and take them right, and then B-Rob goes left, and there's nobody out there that's going to stop him. Nobody. You know, there's nothing worse than watching a play just co get completely crushed. There's nothing worse than that. But I will tell you one thing that sucks is at the end of that play is when you turn around and see two of your linemen standing there watching two guys all over their running back. And when that happens in the backfield, you know somebody didn't do their job. And in this situation, it's a couple somebody's didn't do their job. Not very good protection here. I don't know if this was a missed call or if somebody, maybe Sam missed a call at the line or something here because when the play rolls off, you see, I mean, even Cole Turner runs right past two guys who end up hitting the, the running back in the backfield right here. You could, you could tell this was a, a blown play. I'd like to hear more about this play right here and see what actually happened here. This was definitely something that went wrong, clearly. 
Brian Robinson so far this season has been pretty damn close to elite. 37 carries, 146 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, three receptions for 49 yards, a touchdown receiving. His 13 rushes for first downs are first in the league. He's actually eighth in the league in yards after contact. I guess I got a little ahead of myself saying first. He's top 10 in yards, and he has nine missed tackles on runs, which is tied for fourth in the league right now. I mean, even the harshest critic has to admit that that's pretty good. And I feel like they're just now getting into his bag. He wasn't able to really, you know, fully show himself last year after getting shot in the freaking preseason. And this year, I feel like, you know, the game plan fits his athletic set so much more. Not to mention the fact that we're able to see that he's actually pretty good after catching the ball too. And I believe I heard Biennemi say earlier in the preseason maybe that in his mind, you know, those short passes are just like running the ball anyway so you have to take that into account when you start thinking that they're not running the ball enough or whatever the case may be especially you know the last couple of weeks it seems like they've started out kind of slow and as soon as they get into the running game you know things start to kind of fit into place so to speak it's all in the game plan and in my opinion i think brian robinson's only going to get better let me know what you guys think about b rob down in the comments y'all take it easy peace